guys, this is the line for the Final Fantasy VII Remake and the line that we didn't get to yesterday. To the channel and this is ace again from fit to play games and today will be e3 part two i just recently got back from e3 and let me talk i just wanted to talk to you guys about the two games that i wanted to definitely get in and try out today which is cyberpunk and final fantasy 7 the remake the reason i only tried it today for the final fantasy 7 number one there was a waiting list where you have to get an actual ticket that shows the time that you're able to come in and also be able to try the demo that they have. And number two, when I got there today very early, I was able to get a ticket, but unfortunately both of those two venues, which is Cyberpunk and Final Fantasy VII, did not allow any kind of media or any kind of footage taking while trying out the demo that they have. Unfortunately, that's bad for me. Most of the YouTubers as well, that's bad for them just because we we live to give you guys information since some of um, some of us are unable to go to the E3. Yes, some of, some us, of us are actually able to watch the E3 via stream and Twitch but that doesn't really show a whole lot when it comes to actually playing the demo and i wanted to give that to you guys today just because i wanted to share with you the experience that i get from my second day attending e3 but unfortunately it was halted by the fact that both of those developers did not allow media nor youtubers such as myself to show any kind of footage regarding their game but I can give you information regarding those two games because let me start off with Cyberpunk. The game is definitely a mismatch. Not a mismatch, I'm saying this mismatch because I see a whole lot taken from games that we already know about regarding this Cyberpunk game. They, I feel like they've used a whole lot of Grand Theft Auto's ideas to this game just because of its open world type and also they've used a lot of footage or not footage gameplay borrowed from Watch Dogs and also their original um, original gameplay themselves the reason I say this is like GTA because the setting is definitely open world you can use all sorts of vehicles um, mainly a motorcycle from the very beginning where we, the developers was actually during the venue that we went in we didn't really get to try the demo of the game instead we were all kind of sitting in this auditorium style um, uh, place it's almost like a theater really because it's a giant projection screen in their venue of course everything is hidden it was all pitch black so nobody could really um, you know try and make a footage out of it. I don't know if anyone did I wouldn't because I do respect every single developers out there To have that kind of privacy and I want them to be able to work properly in the game 
that I am hoping to play when it's released and I want it to be perfect. I don't want it to ruin for anybody and also I don't want to ruin it for the developer so I do not want to cheat that way. However, the game itself is, it feels like it's already, it feels like the game is already polished for something that's not really finished. The developer, as he explains the entire game, there was actually another gentleman who was uh, playing the game while he explains how the game is working and he's he basically showed us two sides of the story you have a character named B you can actually play him as a male or a female and you can tactically and strategically use two kinds of style of gameplay in the game but that is is something that subject subjected to to change obviously because this is just some kind of a demo and a trial so it's not it's not you know already decided that this is what it's going to look like they're just basically trying to see how our reaction would be and how would we act regarding what the game and how the gameplay works as he was explaining it number two uh the game reminds me a lot of uh, Watch Dogs because if you guys remember if, if any of you ever played Watch Dogs it actually used a uh, style of gaming by using hacking abilities now Watch Dogs also reminded me a whole lot of Grand Theft Auto because you know with the car stealing and unlocking cars just using the functionality of your cell phone in game that actually reminds me a whole lot of Watch Dogs as well you can as V or I believe in Cyberpunk 2077, all human beings some, has some kind of cybernetic enhancement that is in their body. Basically, you have wires sticking out of your body and are able to plug into something like a computer terminal and be able to download anything that is within that computer and you know hack into that information and use it either for good by selling it to the black market or sharing the information to to your gang that you're working for so that's how kind of the character works and that's i think that is the way you're going to be able to level up and make money within the game as you progress um, there are two styles of gameplay number one you can approach the game very stealthy and they show this showed the stealthiness of the game and basically if you approach the game stealthily you can use different kinds of diversions you can hack into obviously remember what i said every single human being probably has or a hundred percent has a cybernetic kind cybernetically enhanced with some kind of tech in their body so you can hack into their body and also reprogram whatever whatever enhancement they have in their body too it was funny because he programmed one of the ai enemies to shoot himself which is very crazy and also you can hack into terminals making it explode just like in watchdogs so that's one of the key factors that i thought this is just like watchdog to me um also the second type of gameplay which is you can go gung-ho which means you know you go into a room guns blazing shooting everything that is around you and basically making everything explode if that's your style of gaming and also the female V has strength enhancement in her body so basically she can tear through steel doors and just break it open by using all of her um, uh, human enhancement abilities and also obviously her body is her arms are partially robotic so that's how she's able to tear through and break through doors very easily and basically you know go going out guns blazing and shooting everything that is not the <laughs> stealthiest approach but it works so basically they showed us those two kinds of gameplay for for the the game itself um, as far as I know 
Um, Cyberpunk is something that I am now looking forward to getting when it comes out next year and definitely something that you guys should definitely look out, look out and watch out for because it's a very good game. I you if you've seen what I've seen, if you didn't, if you weren't able to attend E3 and you're unable to go into that room specifically, I'm telling you now, my my friends, it's an amazing game. Um, it's something to look forward to. So this year is not dead by any means. It's just getting any. It is just just getting better. Now let me talk about Final Fantasy VII the remake a little bit. Now last. I wouldn't say last week, yesterday, I meant to try out the game, but like I said, unfortunately, I didn't get any tickets from the booth that they had prepared for people that want to try the demo. Unfortunately, when I got there, the booth was closed. They, they usually stop giving away um, tickets for demo after like an hour or two hours of letting the people in. So you have to actually go in there early. Uh, luckily for me, we actually, the family and I actually went into the line, uh, I would say three hours early. We were there at exactly 7.50 and there was only a few people that was in the line and we were in the first line to the South Lobby and you know, that's all she wrote. I went straight to the booth where they were giving away the, the Final Fantasy VII Remake tickets and the rest is history i i got a one i guess 150 p.m trial and demo of course you still have to line up unfortunately unfortunately i couldn't really show you guys any footage regarding final fantasy 7 but i tell you this i am so glad that we are getting a remake of this game just because first uh, i mean you most of you guys already know that they took away the turn-based style of fighting in Final Fantasy from the old series to the remake. What I mean by this is the game is now be you you are now controlling the game a lot more than when it, it was an RPG back in the day. Basically whatever cloud whatever movement cloud makes you make as well. Let me let me explain. Um, for example you have two two units in the game right now let's say you're playing cloud and bear which is the two characters that you're able to play with within the game in the demo that they let us play today now to be able to switch between characters you have to press the up button and the left button to be able to use each character now the the reason for that is some enemies cloud is able to slash through with the buster sword but some like automatic tourist that shoots bullets from up high he's unable to reach so that's why you have to switch between barrett and enabling him to enabling you as the player or such as myself to shoot and use barrett's abilities to shoot down all of those automatic turrets now i think they did that to be strategically um to strategically enhance the gameplay for us players because you know it it stabilizes it stimulates our mind in order to start thinking a little bit more how can we solve this problem so therefore um they did that option also another addition which is since this is not turn-based anymore they um in order for us uh for me and you as a player you have to in order for you to use the ability of the other character while you're using your the other one while you're taking control of the other one, you have to press the L L2 button or the left trigger and the right trigger, whichever character is left and right. So that allows you to slow down the game. It looks definitely like a slow motion type of game. It slow mos everything, so you can decide which of the three that you each uh, which of the three that you want to use, either abilities. Um, items or magic now it slows down you get to let's say you use an ability you and then it scrolls down and it shows you all the abilities that you can use and you pick one 
as long as you have the bar for it so let's say bear uses the the quadruple or the you know eightfold shots or shooting barrage um, ability you will press that and then that character that character will perform that ability while you're still slashing through with the character that you are controlling now i think they did that to compensate for the fact that it's no longer turn-based but it's more strategic based this is what I, that that's what makes me like the game even more because this is a whole new final fantasy 7 folks and you know what after playing the game and and beating that giant I don't know what you want to call it, but it was a mech. The, remember? It was the scorpion mech from the very beginning while you're trying to blow up the Shinra reactor. So, you know, I am definitely looking forward for this game to come out next year. And as should you. And definitely, if you haven't pre-ordered it, my friends, please pre-order. You will not be sorry. And unfortunately, like I said, they didn't let me do any kind of footage in the game. I wish I could have, but I didn't want to ruin it for the developers, nor I want to ruin it for you because, number one, we want an amazing game for them to create so we can enjoy it while, while thinking about all the hard work and all the effort that they put in order for us to enjoy the game that they created, and I definitely respect that. So, shout out to um, Project CD Red and also Square Enix for creating two fantastic games and hopefully when they come out they will be even more amazing than we've seen in the demos in E3 of 2019. So again tomorrow guys will be part three hopefully um, I want to be able to bring to you two more games that I actually, I actually want to try which is uh, Borderlands 3 which was really hard to get in. You know what? Excuse me, but but I think there's three games that I want to bring to you guys on the table and show you the part three regarding those three games. Number one is Borderlands 3 because I've seen the gameplay. I just really want to try the demo first. And number two, Ghost Recon, because uh, that one game, I showed it to you guys last time. I know I've showed you on the part one of this um, whole episode not this whole episode, but the episode before. I showed you a gameplay, but that wasn't me playing. It was another person. So, you know, I, I wanted to be able to explain to you how that game works with me playing in it. But I definitely appreciate the guy who was playing. He was really cool about it when I, you know, when I was filming his gameplay and he didn't mind at all. So um, definitely that. And also the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So that's another game that I want to showcase and show you guys and tell you what i think about it and what my feelings are regarding that game um before i end this video i want to tell you guys there is also another item that i want to talk to you guys about but i will talk to you guys about it when i do the part six of my game pickups i did pick up a whole lot of games here in la um after visiting the retro gaming camp and i've also met a ton of awesome ridiculously great people in in this area so i want to make a shout out to you guys and thank you so much for watching this video and hope you guys stay and continue to watch part three for tomorrow when i make that video so thank you so much you guys have a nice evening i will be turning in so i can wake up early and go to e3 tomorrow so you guys have a nice evening i will see you guys in the next